Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. This is just the beginning. She tore a hole in space. There's a different reality leading into ours. What are you prepared to do? I'm invincible. Your powers only make me stronger. So you can't be matched. Can't be controlled. I'm asking for one last fight. You cannot protect your people. But you can stand tall without standing alone. They're here. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. And in this episode, we are covering the Manu movie that came out from the MCU that's at the theaters still, which is The Marvels, which is uh, 2023. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, The Marvels. The Marvels. So uh, with that, uh, this is a spoiler full podcast. So if you have not seen the movie, don't want to be spoiled, please stop the episode right now. Go to the movies. Go see it. Get And then come back. Of, and then come back to us, you know. <laughs> Basically, you know, form some, some sort of opinion. But it's what, the 34th Marvel uh, movie that's out there right now. Is it really 34? Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Rob's a little bit miffed about me because I did fall asleep to this. I was off today and I just woke up, (laughs) but I am still bright and awake to actually talk about this movie, which is so funny. Uh, but the thing is, is that, uh, yeah, it was my day off and I was like, all right, let's do this and we'll do it for later in the afternoon. He had work today and I did not, but I still have my thoughts in my head about the movie. They're not that bad, but they're also not that good as far <laughs> as my thoughts about the particular movie. So with that, we're going to continue and go forth and go into the movie that we call The Marvels that came out in 2023. And with that, the synopsis of this particular movie is Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, has reclaimed her identity from the tyrannical Kree, and taking revenge on the supreme intelligence. However, unintended uh, consequences see her shouldering the burden of a destabilized universe when her duties send her to an enormous wormhole linked to a Kree revolutionary. Her powers become entangled with two other uh, superheroes to form the Marvels. So uh, I got this offline. So with, with that particular synopsis, I don't think it's the original synopsis that uh, Marvel has put out there, but this is probably one of the most recent and kind of vague, but in a, in a nutshell, yeah. So basically, you know, her powers do get intertwined with Photon, which is Monica Rambeau, and Miss Marvel, who we know from the MCU or Disney Plus TV show, which is uh, Miss Marvel. And a lot of people don't like that show. (laughs) Well, yeah. Yeah. The reason, I think the reason they really didn't like it was more because of um, how they kind of did away with her morphing powers. Yes. Uh, Where she could morph in. 
into yeah. anything. And I think that was the one of the biggest criticisms was that. And then second, and again, this is spoilers if you haven't seen the uh, Disney Plus uh, show. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of the series, they made her into a mutant. And there was no mention in this particular movie about her being a mutant. Correct. So they were mutants, but no, no, they didn't address that part. Yeah. And this is directly after the Miss Marvel show that came out on Disney Plus, a lot longer after the move, uh, the show had ended. And you would think, all right, we're going to address this. Even in the after credits, they, they didn't necessarily have to address it during the film. They could have addressed it at least at the after credits where, spoilers, obviously, we do see something with mutants in it. Right. And it it should have been something that triggered us going, yay, we have the mutants, mutants back even more so. We have a mutant character. Yay, it, it, it's not exactly what we got from the actual comic book, but you utilize that within the show itself. But now we're at the movie point, and you were supposed to say something, <laughs> you know, and not, uh, not to talk like Chandler, bing! <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the thing is, is that uh, it's like blatant in your face. Why didn't you do it? You know, right? But you know, I uh, it's it's it's. I think Marvel is is losing its way at certain times with uh, what they have set forth. A lot of it is writing, following through, continuity, and just gelling everything. Now, mind you, this movie came out way after secret invasion and i still have issues with that because there's no talk you know about secret invasion with the scrolls and everything else because we well the whole thing yeah the whole thing about that is that a lot of people have been asking does this movie take place before or after secret invasion and, and if I'm you actually look if you actually look at the release date i think this was supposed to come out before the secret invasion show it was. And then they and they they pushed it to uh November. And then so a lot of people are like, well, you know, so what about you know certain things that happen in the movie and certain things that happen in the show? And it just seems like somehow, because I guess Secret Invasion, it was such a disaster. Mm -hmm. People people forgot about the show. <laughs> I I think even Marvel forgot about the show. Yeah. <laughs> but that being but that being said. It seems to me when I see this, because when you watch the beginning of the movie, well, when you watch the ending of Miss Marvel, where all of a sudden she disappears and Carol Denvers uh, reappears in her bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens in the beginning of this movie. Yep. Meaning that this takes place as soon as the Miss Marvel show finishes. Correct. So that means there were there was no time for the secret invasion stuff. Yeah. And so that's why I think that this takes place before secret invasion, especially when it but they also mentioned. So what was the planet with the crees uh, where the scrolls were on? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that planet? I don't I know. Don't if they remember. Had uh, I, I know what we're talking about. I remember it. And we do see the emperor of the scrolls too. correct, which we did actually speak about. When I uh, when when Steve and myself and yourself had covered uh, Secret Invasion at times, and I remember talking about that emperor, and he was meant to be vicious and angry and everything. He wasn't. No, that character in this portrayal was very calm, had a different demeanor completely, and what was originally in the comics, and what they actually talked about within secret invasion he wasn't the tyrant that it was that we right. we thought he was going to be he was literally cowering in the hands of these remnants of kree that lost their planet now that are taking revenge in their hands to the scroll right. empire that are segregated to a different uh, like planet at this point and it's like okay Where's the truth? You know, you're weighing your hands up and down. 
pre-scroll. What's the truth? What's the truth? Right. Uh, Secret inv- Invasion, as we saw, it looked like, wow, there's a certain sect of the scrolls that were on Earth that were really, really bad. And, you know, you had Nick Fury himself running away and having to come back all the way from Saber and dealing with this whole mess. And then and this one, it's about, you know, Nick Fury being a little bit aloof and being responsible and really cool about things and having a humorous side about him, about the said situation and handling it well. Whereas before he was, you know, Secret Invasion, he was extremely serious so i think this is an issue with the writers of seeing what came before and this was supposed to be before and it didn't happen and then we got secret invasion and now they're dealing with the consequences of people like us that had watched and covered secret invasion and now (laughs) we're like scratching our heads all right um, is this an alternate universe that we're talking about now? Because you have a lot of fun with alternate universes, but I'm seeing two ends and they don't meet up in the middle of where they're supposed to, to work with continuity. Yeah. Well, the one thing I noticed, uh, so the, actually the name of the planet is Tarnax and they mentioned Tarnax in secret invasion. Yeah. I, I believe right? we talked about it. Yeah, they did. So here's what really gets me about all that. So. Captain Marvel and Nick Fury were supposed to try to get the scrolls a home world. Well, Tarnak seems like it was the home world. Yes. You could put a million fucking people in there. <laughs> they're they're gonna be okay. Yeah. But for some reason, only a handful was there. Yeah. So and they it, were terraforming it. it. Right. And so oh, I don't know if they were terraforming it, but I just know that it was more of like, hey. They're all pissed off because there was, you know, oh, you know, you didn't you didn't even try to look for a place for us. And they didn't even mention in Secret Invasion, we did have a planet for you, but certain events stopped that or whatever it was. No, it was just more like, oh, well, you know, we're sorry. We couldn't find you a uh, a planet. So there are things that just don't line up from the series and this movie. That being said. I mean, this movie has some charming moments. Yeah. But I think a lot of people were kind of thrown off by the whole, hey, you know, first of all, there's a lot of people out there talking bullshit, you know, yeah. that, oh, a, a, a whole bunch of, you know, three women trying to carry this um, this movie. It doesn't work. Right. And mm. I I really don't look at that stuff because. Uh, I think that's uh, anti-feminists that are out there. Well, they, no, I, of course. And, and as a matter of fact, they're producers. There was I forgot somebody up in Marvel or something like that. Uh, at some point, th- thought the same thing, and I heard this uh, somewhere else. But I'm sure he's laughing his ass off because this movie opened in the weekend. To I believe, let me see, what was the uh, the take on this? So the take on this was the box office on this for the f- for the weekend. Yeah. Was I believe 50 no like 40 something million dollars I believe. Yeah. At first. Yeah, it was like That's a, the first it, it, weekend. It, yeah, they estimated it to be anywhere from 47 to 52 million. This is the lowest Marvel movie ever. Yeah. Which is a shame because Quantum Mania and the Eternals, I think, are much worse than this movie. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you and I both agree on the Eternals. Uh, Quantum Mania was something that had had its moments, in my opinion, and we've already reviewed that. But the thing is, is that both have like could have done differently. Eternals could have been easily something you could have introduced into Disney Plus. As a vehicle, Quantum Mania. I think there's too many hands in the pot, and you know, granted, you had Sam Raimi that was the head of the that particular movie, and legendary Sam Raimi. You're talking about um, Multiverse of Madness, there. Oh, all right, yeah, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting <laughs> him confused. Yeah, right. Quantum Mania. Yeah, definitely was a little bit. Uh, yeah, that 
that had to do it definitely needed a rewrite. But I'm not saying that it wasn't entertaining. The thing is that, you know, of course, people have been complaining about the uh, special effects and how poor they've been looking lately. Yeah. Uh, Quantum Mania was definitely what I would say a victim of that. Mm. But the Marvels, you would think, you know, them pushing it to November, that they were going to try to at least make the story better. There were times that the story was, you know, kind of engaging. And then mm. there were things that took me off. And and I think people are very divided into certain things. I know that I was one of those that as I watched this movie and I sat there and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> no, because there were parts like, so I'll give you an example. Use one. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll give you an example. The part of the 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 planet where everybody has to sing to each other. Oh, yeah. And then all, and then all of a sudden it breaks out into some kind of musical. I was like, Why? I mean, but the thing is that some people found that to be a relief and they and I'm like, OK, I guess you like that. But I personally did not. I personally yeah. thought that was a very dumb part to put in there. And the second one was the Flurgans or, you know, or the Flurgan having, you know, little kittens everywhere and then and just the eating sw- everybody. Yeah, that and was. Yeah, <laughs> that just to me, I was like, come on, guys. That to me was just like, well, you just jumped the shark right there. Yeah, it yeah. was just the the singing didn't really get to me as much. I'm like, okay, that was definitely and something was written ahead of time that they already knew, and they wanted to invoke that in that way, uh, very much like with like uh, let's talk about another movie fairly recently that Marvel mm-hmm. had put up, Love and Thunder, right? And how comedic that was. That didn't have as much of an issue, but still had issues back then. When it came out, I I, I think a lot of people had issues with that. I mean, if you watch Thor Ragnarok, right, while that gave new life to Thor itself, it Mm -hmm. made it comedic, but it didn't make it over the top. Then all of a sudden, they just kind of like told Taika, do whatever you want. And he went way overboard. Somebody should have been like, yo, dude, no, no, let's rein it back. Not Mm -hmm. that much. Yep. He went. So a lot of people, that's why it still is considered one of the poor example, you know, one of the movies after the um, end game, the end game that, you know, has a lot of criticism and it's not that great. It's being grouped with Eternals and Quantum Mania mm. when it comes to that. This had its moments, but like stuff like that, like that whole musical part to me, it didn't jive, but that's just me. Yeah, I um, so for some people, some people actually like that. Some people actually like the little kittens. The one thing that everybody says and agrees on is that Iman Vellani, the one who plays Miss Marvel, was the actual star of this entire movie. Really? Yeah, a lot of people are just giving her a lot of praise because, you know, she played it the way she was playing a kid, you know, because she is. She's a kid. Yeah. She's a kid that she idolizes, Miss Marvel, and now she's there with her hero. Mm-hmm. And the way she acts would be exactly like a kid would act. Yeah, and I expected that coming into the movie. Right, of, this is way she would react to Captain Marvel, how she would act towards Monica Rambeau, Nick Fury. And then her parents and how their reaction are to Captain Marvel, as well as Nick Fury as well. So to me, I was expecting that. And it's very much akin to what we got from the same Miss Marvel that we get in the comic. Personality wise, attitude wise, kid wise, everything. And I was fine with it. And I don't think she is the lead. I think she's the lead character or subject that brings them together right it's the gel that brings both monica rambeau and carol danvers together as a unit and it it worked well it worked very well Uh, a lot of people are not fans of miss marvel in the comic books there are not many fans of miss marvel of the tv show its portrayal which i understand completely because you want it to be Exactly like the comic, but, you know, through adaptation that Marvel has done with a lot of characters. And we'll, we'll right. talk about more about that. Her powers and how they are. 
it's not morphing. It's not elastic. It's more of right. a presentation. It looks like something out of Green Lantern with the, her powers coming out from her body, even though it, it is the bangle that does it. Which right. is the, the reason for this particular movie. Because we get more information about it. Somebody goes out there. Now, I understand people's gripes about that. Me, I... I enjoyed it. I was okay with it. That writing, I understood. The issue that I have is with the writing, it's like, okay, we want Guardians of the Galaxy again, but with the Marvels right now. So you got somebody who acts and has the same hammer as Ronan the Accuser and looking for revenge. And in, you know, in this case, uh, in, in Guardians' case, it was Ronan looking for power and, you know, acclaim and all that good stuff but in this case this is a revenge one now yeah it's played the character is played by tom hiddleston's wife which we all know right and and she has the same hammer doing the same thing and finds that other bangle that we've been talking about ever since miss marvel left the air on disney plus how many months ago so oh it's like oh okay we're picking up where we left off with miss marvel and then we get this whole convoluted backstory about how Captain Marvel destroyed the Kree, which was off camera, which we get in pretty much flashbacks. And then how she's identified as being the annihilator of the Kree species itself and in that planet, which is OK. And I'm like, OK, all right. So. That, but that was one of the that was one of the biggest criticisms because so Dar Ben is actually a he's a character, of course, in, in Marvel Comics, but he is such a lesser character. Yes. Then you would expect that the fact that they dug so deep into the Marvel well just to try to make that person the villain. And mm-hmm. honestly, I don't think that villain was that memorable. There were times that when I, as I see this, it looked like a low budget film at certain times when she was on the uh, screen. I don't know. There was just she didn't come off to me. She didn't come off menacing to me. She didn't come off as a formidable villain. No yeah, one. it was just yeah. she was an angry person that just wanted to get revenge and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, OK. But for some reason. This whole thing really didn't move like that. Like this entire phase is so messed up that this, this didn't move the story forward for the next phase. What it did was it moved it forward for like, Hey, to have the X-Men in. But of course, with all the Jonathan Winters problems where now they're trying to rethink whether they're going to have, uh, Jonathan I mean, Winters. not jo- Jonathan Majors. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jonathan Winters. <laughs> Where are you going back to Mark? Oh, holy <laughs> shit. What a, what a, I threw that in there. No, but yeah, Jonathan, yeah, yeah, Jonathan Mayer's problems. Marvel is now rethinking the whole, you know, uh, Kang thing and yeah. trying to see if, OK, maybe that was just that from last. You know, the last rumor was that they were going to try to put Dr. Doom. Well, that would make more sense based upon the comic runs and the timeline, because not only did it, well, as we all know, listeners and you listeners that are uh, comic readers, the original Secret Wars ended in the sense of where Dr. Doom gained a claim and getting that that power from the Beyonder and then come in Secret Wars 2, he got more power and then come the most recent version of secret wars that we our secret wars for the mcu would be landing which is multiversal that lands into the realm of multiversal people but a multiversal battle planet and doom is the ultimate villain in that comic run they're trying to make it so that kang is there because he deals with time and different multiple universes so they're they're thinking they could elaborate and make that work but the issues with jonathan majors that are going on they have had hints of dr doom like let's say in moon knight what what hint did they have in that because i didn't see any hints of uh, dr doom in that 
they literally had all the hints of Oh, you're talking of, about uh, Litvaria where um Correct, yeah. where you would see him sitting uh, he wakes up in the car and it's in the movement and then he wakes up and he's outside and it's a big castle. Uh you also see a lot varying kind of uh boxes in the the truck that he winds up waking up in and battling somebody. So they they kind of Easter egg certain things of Latveria in certain shows and movies here and there. And it's interesting, but it's kind of like it, it's a tease. It's a tease because, you but, know, of course, they want to lead into Fantastic Four. But I think mm-hmm. now they're trying to, like, say, OK, you know what? Let's kind of like put the Kang thing on the side, because honestly, I don't know why Kang became the next level villain. Like you have somewhere like Thanos, right? Been. Yeah, like you have somewhere like Thanos, and Thanos was memorable, but you didn't get mm-hmm. Thanos, right? You got little hints of him, but you didn't get Thanos yeah. in the beginning. You got Thanos towards the end in two movies. That's when you got to see a lot of Thanos. Everybody waited for that event in order to see Thanos here, they give you Kang right away. So they're already giving you the villain way too early in, into this phase. And I yeah. think that to me, that was a mistake, but that being said now, you know, to go back to Marvel, uh, the Marvels, I just think mm-hmm. the, that this movie, first of all, I think it's all over the place, but Oh yeah. Writing wise, it was writing wise. It was all over the place. I think that there were just certain things that just didn't match up very well. They shouldn't have really call. I mean, th- if this was, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's called the Marvels. Well, I thought it was supposed to be Captain Marvel 2. Now they call it the mm-hmm. Marvels, which is honestly a group of women that are not even a group in in the comic books. Nope. So, nope. you know, I, I don't I don't see. I like the idea for the fact you have two people in there, at least that have Marvel in their name. Captain Marvel got Miss Marvel. That's it. Now, unfortunately. Fortunately, Photon, which doesn't even have an official, what, Professor Marvel, all this crap that they were trying to do, trying to give her a name. Right. They did They did and mention it, Photon, and what was the other name? Um, there's another name that she goes by, but... Binary? No, Binary was... Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But I, I don't remember. But they remember, did try to say, but... you know, like, I remember Kamala saying something about, like, how about Photon or something like that. So, you know, they would throw, she was throwing out names that they were being, that were used in the comic book. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean. Which is sad because, honestly, Monica Rambeau in the comics was Captain Marvel in the original Secret Wars that we got. And she had, it, it's funny, too, because even with her visage with her new suit that they got on the singing planet that was her except minus the mask even miss marvel says it's like i don't have my mask so all of them are maskless at this point too throughout the movie so uh, apparently no masks are needed now because i guess nobody knows who the hell they are but which i find okay uh, you know the, these are, are adaptations and they could change that but you know, in the original Secret Wars, we do have Captain Marvel by Monica Rambeau. Same kind of frizzled kind of hair that she has. I'm not going to say Afro based, but her hair was very big in this particular episode in comparison to WandaVision and in the, the regular MCU. Uh, it, as it, it were. It looked the same to me, but okay. <laughs> well, to me, it, it looked. Maybe it's me, my, my imagination imposing on it going, okay, it's her without the damn mask. (laughs) But, and a lot of it also had to do with, uh, you know, just, she should have already had a name by now. There should have been a code name by Saber, not shield anymore. Everybody, not even sword, which is what Saber is in the comic book. So it's initially sword that's in the comic. So because shield is no longer, but that's my own little gripes and everything about the MCU and, and, and I, how their, their tactics. are. I think so my, my opinion on Marvel is that I'm still not going to give up on them. I, um, same here. I think they stumbled. That's what I think. 
I think they stumbled. Mm. And the one thing they're trying to do is to, you know, regroup and now try to see if they could come out with some good quality stuff instead of all the quantity stuff that we were getting. I mean, we were getting so much Marvel that it no <laughs> longer became special. It was just yeah. something that we, we were getting it every other month. There was something about Marvel. And we're like, all right, whatever. And then, of course, I think the biggest thing that has ruined this, was, it has been the fact that people who do not watch the TV shows, they go to these movies and they're left wondering where the hell is this coming from? And they don't realize mm -hmm. that they have to go watch a show in order for them to understand a little better. And that has turned off a lot of people. But I'm, yeah. I have hopes for them. Definitely, I think Deadpool should hopefully um, bring back some of that magic to Marvel again. <laughs> and we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, we will. Uh, my overall take about the movie itself, honestly, was that it was entertaining. And it gave us an entertaining, uh, entertaining look about the these characters individually. We got a little bit more further into the story plot of Monica Rambeau and Carol Danvers. They did eliminate a specific story point within the, the movie before it was released, which was an edit, which was there was supposed to be some sort of uh, love affair between Monica and Carol, which they took out, as well as with Maria Rambo. So they met, they kind of left it off at saying, um, even Fury says it, saying, oh, I, am I like interrupting some sort of uh, family reunion? Which was okay. But you could see within that cut scene, these are cut scenes that were redone. So a lot of people already had pre-screened the, the movie itself. And you're talking a long time ago, and then there were rewrites and reshoots regarding this. So they eliminated that. Now, I'm not saying I'm upset about the woke movement or anything that's out there or, or upset about it in any way or they had to shut it down. But to me, it was kind of pushed. But in this case, with the reshoots and the rewrites, it was kind of right in your face for somebody who knew about it. And you're like, OK, that was kind of awkward, but they could have they would have to have uh, retooled and rewrote and reshot a lot of the movie at that point of how these characters interacted and reacted to one another. When it came to Miss Marvel and her introduction, a lot of people hated it because honestly, the movie was geared more towards between a 12, 12 year old to 45 year old dynamic. That's out there. Uh, a lot of people like me would not be within that dynamic area because we're outside of it. We're older and I'm OK with it because I was aware of the character of Miss Marvel, her impact and what they've already done with the character. And a lot of people find the character being annoying that are of my age bracket and me. I just. Like, OK, I could see it from the viewpoint of a millennial or zennial or whatever you want to call kids nowadays. But they're trying to get grafted to that market area and it's fine. And uh, I think uh, the girl who plays Kamala and even her parents and her brother, it just worked out story wise, writing wise, as far as comedic. The music wasn't really anything that was extravagant, but it had its tensions. And it did well for the movie and it, it kind of fit the villain role like we are, we discussed a little bit already. Honestly, no, it could have been a completely different character. I would have liked to like further the MCU with along instead of having this character from the Kree make it a Nihilus doing something different. Could have done that. They could uh, have bought in uh, Adam Warlock since Adam Warlock and. And the Cree and Miss Marvel and all those things are actually tied in together in the comic books. I mean, this was a good opportunity to try to use Adam Morlock, except But they've already ruined that. Yeah, yeah. they ruined Adam Morlock Guardians yeah, three. in Guardians Three, which was the only I would say pro in that movie, that was the only thing that bothered me about that movie was that the way they portrayed that character. Same here. That that was the only issue I had of that particular movie. We covered that. Yeah. But yeah, that was the only issue I had when it came to Guardians 3 was Adam Warlock. 
because there were so many hopes and dreams that were going into Adam Warlock, the Warlock himself, who was very prominent in the comics for not only the Kree Empire and everything that was going on, but also a big catalyst in Endgame mm. during the Infinity Gauntlet series that was in comic form. He was a very much a key uh, catalyst within that, and uh, they took that away. And when they gave it to us, they teased us at the end of, what was it, Guardians 2. We were just sitting on that for so long, and then, then out of the blue, it's like, oh, we get Guardians 3. Oh, we get to finally see Adam Lorelock. And they kind of made him a little goofy, which, okay, that's fine. But I, and then they eventually made him at the very end. Spoilers, I'm sorry if everybody didn't understand spoilers in this, but uh, at the end of Guardians 3, he became part of the Guardians. Right. Which was okay, in my opinion. I thought, okay, but he's not as powerful as he once was in the comics. But like I said, with, with the character we got as a villain, they could have easily made that a Nihilus. And then at least harken back to somebody who is a darker villain in but Annihilus, Annihilus the, uh, is like a character that you mostly see in Fantastic Four. That is true. But they own it now. So they could easily do that and then incorporate that. And then they could do a past version of Annihilus when they introduced the Fantastic Four. Because if they were smart, they wouldn't actually go, hold on. We're going to hold do the whole origin story of the Fantastic Four again. Do we want to see that again? We've already seen it twice. And they were smart enough in the MCU and Sony to say, we've already done this with Spider-Man. We're not going to see that origin story yet again. And if they're smart, they'll do that with the Fantastic Four. But they could utilize that and do it as like a previously on or this previously happened. And then do a quick flashback. Mm. And, and then uh, whoever plays Reed Richards, because there's like issues with that. Well, too, you know who's going to play Reed Richards, right? Pedro Pascal is supposedly in the running, and I I got to the point of being tired of saying, hearing, it's official, it's official, and, you know, honestly, this is all fan casting. For a long time, it was supposed to be, oh, I forgot his name, Rick, uh, from Star Wars. From Star Wars? Yeah. Well, I know. The new version of Star Wars. I, I remember that they won Adam driver oh the, yeah they, they said that he was supposed to play but according to comicbook.com i believe they said that it's official that it is pedro pascal yeah i I've, I've heard a lot of people my friend jason had posted it my friend ben and i are still on the same fence of going we've been hearing this we want it the only official story that we could actually pay respect to would be like vanity fair all these other places that are highly reputable. Once you start saying comicbook.com, Dead Central, all this other stuff that's out there, it's kind of on a wing and a prayer, and then it changes overnight. Right. My attitude is as soon as Marvel gives us that official, here it is, because it's always been name after name after name, and then it changes. Yeah. And you're like, uh, well, that's not So official here's, here's the interesting thing. So something like... That I'm reading that Fantastic Four Kevin Feige reportedly feared cast was too white. <laughs> uh, so that's why they wanted to put Pedro Pascal in it. But there's an interesting thing out there where uh, the original, what is it, the Kirby family or something like that? Of course, you know, Stanley and Jack yes. Kirby are the ones that came up with uh, Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. There is something that stipulates that the Fantastic Four, they're supposed to be a Jewish family. And that it should remain yes. as a Jewish family. So it's going to be very interesting to now hear this whole, hey, Marvel Studios, all of a sudden, you know, it's going to be all anti-Semitic and all this stuff because they're not going <laughs> to the Jewish family as opposed to now trying to make it Spanish, you know, so. I could just hear the the bombs going off on that one if it does happen. Well, yeah, it, it's. Honestly, a lot of uh, a lot of that came into play too because I forgot who they got from. They cast it originally. It was so that I mean, original for for the thing. Oh, it was, not sure there. Okay, the 
thing was, and I was like, excuse my tapping, everybody. Uh, I, I'm looking it up, who the actor is, and the reason why they initially casted him. Uh, David Diggs was originally casted as uh, Ben Grimm. Mm-hmm. And David Diggs was from Snowpiercer. He was in Hamilton, if you all recall. Davi Diggs himself is Jewish, and that was the whole point of having him be Ben Grimm, who is the thing, right. because that way they would have that representation. So I, I can understand where it's like, okay, they want to do this so that they have the representation. Davi Diggs, I don't mind that he is a uh, a black actor, that uh, I love his work. I love his acting. He is a great actor, writer, director. And I love Snowpiercer, and I loved all his other subsequent characters. I think he would have been perfect as the character of Ben Grimm. If they continue to do that, it would be great. It's not your ever love and blue-eyed Ben Grimm that you do get out of Fantastic Four, but honestly, what did we get out of the other version of Fantastic Four? Right. We did get a black actor in there in the sense of, well, he was originally yeah, he wind wound up coming into the MCU as Killmonger, and he played Johnny Storm, which I didn't have a problem with either. Too in that particular movie, it was just a bad movie. Oh, I but, had a problem with that. That that was just every everything about that movie was miscast. Everything. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, that's such a. Not to talk about bad mistakes by a non-Marvel film, too, by the way. It was originally a Fox film, too. But uh, I didn't have a problem with, like, uh, different racial casting at all. I have no problems with that. The thing is, is that, you know, when they start to saying, oh, it's all anti-Semitic, and I'm like, honestly, you're just looking for a reason of argument. Here's Here's the opinion of a Latino man like myself. Okay. I have a problem. When it comes to characters that have been around for a very long time, that all of a sudden and everybody was whitewashed, and, right? But that all of a sudden they decide, well, we're going to make them different race. And I'm like, why would you do that when <laughs> just come up with a character? There are tons of characters out there of different races that are very popular. Why are you taking? That is true. A character, if there is not, especially when it comes to very iconic characters that have been around for the last 50 years, and then somebody comes in and says, well, I'm just going to change them to a different race. And it's like, why? All you're doing is pissing off 50 years of people loving that character. And, and Mm -hmm. of course, they love the character because of the history behind that character. You grew up Mm -hmm. with that character. It's not that people are trying to be racist or anything like that. It's just the fact that, hey, this is the character, period. And then all of a sudden you change it. Now, if it's a character like, you know, they have race swapped certain characters in Marvel that are just like lesser characters that have been around, you know, in the MCU. I mean, uh, in Marvel Mm -hmm. comics that you're not like, oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I saw him, I don't know, 30 years ago, but it's not like he's a popular character. They bring him out once in a blue moon. Sure, go <laughs> ahead and do whatever you want on that. But yeah, you know, you didn't see anyone all of a sudden decide, hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna change Peter Parker to be a black man. No, they went ahead and made a character like Miles Morales, and he became a hit, and mm-hmm. he's his own character. They didn't have to change Peter Parker, <laughs> they made a character that is very interesting and very popular with people. And as a matter of fact, you know, especially with younger people and younger people of color, that's their Spider-Man. But it, but it didn't true. have to be, hey, let's race swap them. So I don't think, I mean, I, I don't see why they have to do stuff like that sometimes. You know, Kamala Khan, they made her, I think, is uh, Indian or Pakistani, or uh, and I apologize, Indian. I'm not sure if it's 
Indian or Pakistani. It's or a cross between both races. I'm but, not sure, know, she, and I apologize for anybody out there that I yeah, don't know this. Here. But, you know, they made her uh, basically Muslim. They have Monica Rambo, who from the very beginning in Marvel Comics, she was black. And yep. guess what? There's no reason to change them. I'm mean, just a matter of fact, God forbid you change them. But you know what? There were characters that were made and they were actually loved and people accepted them. So there's no reason for me. There's no reason to change an older character. Just go with the ones that, you know, have been around for a long time already of a different color. I mean, if you look at the X-Men, the X-Men was all about different races, different, what I would say, the di- cultures. different cultures, the differences between yeah, everybody. Russian, African. I mean, yeah. Stanley was great about that, saying, hey, you know, the, the new X-Men, well, yeah, I'm going to have a German, I'm going to have a Russian, I'm going to have a Canadian, I'm going to have an African, I'm going to have American Indian, I'm going to mm-hmm. have Irish. Irish. You know, and guess what? Yeah. They became so popular, granted that they killed off Thunderbird, but then they bought him back. But they and Banshee, too. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? I mean, they became characters that everybody loved and they grew up with them. Imagine yeah. if somebody comes in and says, you know what? I'm just gonna change Storm to I don't know, Some white chip. yeah, a white jack. <laughs> yeah. Dude, people will be in an uproar. So, uproar. Yeah, so, oh. so there's no reason, I think, to change the iconic characters. Just use the other characters that are also iconic of color. And I think that, yeah. that you know, like this movie did that very well. I think, you know, the Marvels, yeah. they didn't change anything around. So I was okay with that. You know, case in point, Nick for Fury, too, as far as the legacy character that was originally white. He was, except in the, ult- in the ultimate uh, universe, he was black. Correct. And it was based after Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, too. it was. So, and a lot of people <laughs> liked that character, and it seemed like you know, and, it, and worked. it worked. That character worked, and I will say, yeah, that's that's a character that actually did work in terms of that. Yeah, they could also bring Michael Hasselhoff, who actually did play Nick Fury on TV, now they're doing as an alternate version. <laughs> that's going to be a very old Nick Fury, man. <laughs> yeah, he's warranting that 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 patch, eye patch in the old yeah. age. No, I just I just think that there's really no reason to ju- go freaking crazy. Honestly, I feel like it's a very hypocr- a hypocritical thing. I feel yeah. that every time they do that, they're checking off a box. Say, okay, did we get the token black guy? Yes. Did we get the token? Correct. Did we get the yeah. token Latino guy? Yes. That's check. Oh, we need a check here. Yes. Oh, don't forget. We got to also put the, you know, a gay person in here. Check. It's like they're yeah. checking off all these boxes. Just, just to accommodate society. Just to accommodate and what it. They're fishing. Yeah. But there's, there's really no reason that they're giving for that. You know, I don't care about a couple that's that's a gay couple in the movie or in any yeah. movie. It's just don't all of a sudden put it front and centered, like you know, like and the prime like, focus like, like you're of throwing it like you're do. throwing it in people's faces, saying, "See what we did? See what we did? We're we're cool too." You know, it's to <laughs> me the story is always should go first. I don't yeah, care the story and, about the person's yeah. background. I don't care about their sexual relation. I don't care about any of that. Um, if the story's good and if that story warrants that type of exploration of that relationship, then fine. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't, I'm like, okay, you're just checking off boxes again. So. Yeah. That's my little rant on that. Um, But that being said, (laughs) you know, when it comes to, you know, this movie, I think this movie did a fantastic job um, with that part of it where they just did not deviate from, you know, changing the characters because, oh, you know, let's just change it because of this or that. No, those are characters in Marvel Comics. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, I, uh, I, my... My thought still is, is that it was entertaining, gave us the humor, gave us the action, definitely. Um, there are flaws within it, within the, the writing and continuity. That's all it was. And 
uh, we did. Uh, it's just another movie that propelled the 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 MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie machine, to give us more teasing, which makes me move right along into because we, you know, I already spoke about music and it wasn't anything grand or great, but it did great for certain scenes. But the music was just okay. It was okay. It, it, for it, a it, it film. served the purpose. Like, like we yeah. have said in other podcasts, there are iconic scores where mm-hmm. you go, wow, the score really drove the movie. And you know where it and came from. all of a yeah. sudden, you know, you're like, wow, you know, because of that score, it made things better. And then there's a score that just, you know, you need for a movie. This was a mm-hmm. score that you just needed for a movie. I didn't come out out of Correct. the movie humming the damn you know uh, <laughs> score and then like that. yeah i i i don't even remember the scores Correct. or the themes from it but it, it's one of those uh the typical it, it i hate saying it it was very much multiversal madness very much quantum mania in the sense of it's just another marvel film mm-hmm. and uh people will go see it opening weekend it'll make some sort of money in order to pay for itself to some degree, or to keep the the uh, the Marvel legacy moving on, but we also get the typical after credit scenes, which we all look forward to, and we do get two poignant ones, and that and it's not even at the credit scenes, just before the credit scenes, yeah, and and then we get uh, Miss Marvel herself, Kamala, coming up to uh, the new Hawkeye. Kate which, Bishop. Uh, Kate Bishop herself, which we've already seen from the Hawkeye TV series, and her explaining, hey, uh, here, Ant-Man's got a uh, daughter, too, so let's move this forward, and she's using the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. iPad thing to show her. They and, don't mention that. Uh, uh, I don't think they mention uh, Ant-Man. They did mention somebody had a, a child, a daughter. And I couldn't remember. And I asked somebody, and they were like, "Oh no, they, they were talking about um, Ant Man's daughter." And I was like, "AC oh, Lang." Okay. Um, all right, yeah, I don't yeah. remember that. We will have to go see it. Yeah, she they they kind of made you know Kamala Khan all of a sudden do the same role that Nick Fury did the first time he met uh, Tony Stark, which was, "Hey, there's a Correct. bigger world out there. Did you think you were the Correct. only superhero?" And this, of course, is mm-hmm. all leading to. Uh, the, then, yeah, the Young Avengers. Avengers, which honestly, if you really look at the Marvel movies and, and the Marvel TV shows, all the Young Avengers have actually been already introduced. Correct. So, And we already got, uh, you know, we already got the new Hawkeye introduced. Miss Marvel's already been introduced. Uh, Casey Lang has already been introduced. So it's not, and we, and same thing with at the end of She Hulk, we got Scar. We got Scar, and then we got, of course, um, what is it? Uh, Scarlet Witch's uh, kids, kids that are supposed yep. Wicked w- and uh, right, Wicked yeah. and uh, who's the other one? I forgot the name of the other one, but they're both quick. They're they're both like supposed to be also in the Young Avengers. So. Yeah. With the multiversal thing, they could easily incorporate them, get them involved, and then move forward. And then those young actors that my friend Paik already knows <laughs> has has interviewed on the at, at various conventions. So my friend Paik does does Run for Your Lives and uh, Strange Indeed podcast. He uh, he actually befriended uh, one of the uh, kids from the WandaVision show. And and their parents, so he keeps in touch. But uh, they, uh, it, it, it'll give them their own, you know, movie. And I think I think it'd probably be a one-off movie more than anything. I don't think it's not going to be anything huge, but it was a way to, all right, we have the Young Avengers, but we're also going to be getting the Thunderbolts anyway, right? Because they have to explain come the new Captain America movie when. We get Harrison Ford as uh, Ross Thunderbolt. Uh, Ro- Thunderbolt Ross, and he becomes. I, I hate saying it, and it's kind of making fun of friends, but Red Ross, because <laughs> he's the Red Hulk. Yeah. So, um, but the thing is, is that um, 
yeah, we're looking at a lot of things to throw into the bowl or the salad bowl, as I would say, yeah. of Marvel. And I do enjoy that to some degree, but don't rush it. Don't push it. Stick to the rhythm that we've been dealing with. That was the Merry Marvel way. Uh, you know, I, I like still like to be in the, the Merry Marvel movie society like anybody else and just love to watch these movies come out based upon the comics that we love that were a build up. So uh, I'm hoping that they slow back and just like as uh, Rob was mentioning, you know, Kevin Feige wanted to do more quality over quantity. And I, I'm hoping that they come back to that. Originally, Echo was supposed to be canceled. No, actually, it's but yeah, now, now it's coming out. The entire thing is coming out in uh, January, February. Yeah. yeah, which we will be covering. I'm thinking we're probably going to do it two episodes at a time. Because I'm, I wasn't very hopeful for it once I, I was hopeful for it like a year ago. Right now, I'm not looking forward to it as much, but I will be covering it with a little bit more hopeful eyes. But I figured we do two episodes at a time on the podcast because I'm, I'm just curious. I'm like, how are they going to deal with Matt? How are they going to deal with Kingpin? There's so much to be caught up on because of not just the pandemic, but also with these, the writer strikes, the SAG after strikes, they're behind in a lot of ways. And this was filmed during that time or just before it ended or before it started. Right. So now, now we have to deal with that. Um, I think what's going to happen. I mean, again, this is their, this is their way of probably slowing things down. Uh, We know that daredevil, um, Halfway through, they decided to cancel everything they had and restart again because they Mm -hmm. didn't like what they were seeing, which, you know what? I don't have a problem with that. That just means that they're really caring about the way this thing is being done. Um, Yeah, how it's presented and fan reaction. Yeah, they're not rushing it through. You know, so you got Mm -hmm. a few projects out there that are actually, they're trying to take their time. Look, I mean, DC, if in 2024, uh, four or five yeah <laughs> right, four. So at least by the end of 2024 uh, no, 2024 say. the entire year 2024 there's not a single dc project coming out really 2024 2024 okay. not a single project and it's because i guess james gunn is trying to you know make sure that what he comes out with it's going to you know be of good quality now that being said they they just mm-hmm. announced that the villain in Superman uh, is going to be the authority, and I don't understand why. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> uh, so you know, so that's kind of like that's kind of strange there. So we'll have to see how that goes. But mm-hmm. yeah, you know, you, there's the fact that there is there is superhero fatigue already. And I think, yeah, and I is. think, the fact that we have um, all the studios somewhat failing when it comes to you know trying to grasp that fire again, uh, especially Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, well, the Marvel was the uh, leading flag holder and running right listen, across. Every everybody. time you saw the Marvel name come up on a screen, you knew this was going to, you know, yeah, you knew this was going to be special. And now a lot of people are just kind of like going, eh, who cares? Nah. And that's a shame. <laughs> so I'm hoping they could at least, they're never going to recapture that first 10 years ever. We know that. No, no, but no. they need to do something better um, than what they're doing now. I think like the, also, the other part of this movie that they showed was of course, beast from the x-men yeah yeah the after credit the, scene that we right. do get where uh monica is forced to go into the other universe and then she meets maria rambo as well as beast from the x-men right. uh we get kelsey Grammer voicing but we get the true look of what beast looked like in comic form 
in, in comparison to his other visages right. that we got from the uh, cinematic universe. Yeah, and then we see uh, Maria Rambo's mom, who is actually dressed in a Monica Rambo's mom, which is Maria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maria Rambo is dressed as binary. Correct. So in this, which we already saw in the Multiverse of Madness, by the way, she got killed. She was the new Captain Marvel. Well, she was Captain and Marvel that... there, but not binary. Correct. There. Yeah. So, but yeah, here she's binary, and a lot of people are saying that this universe is possibly. You know, remember the X Men cartoon? Yeah, they're they're thinking that it it is the X Men cartoon universe. Yeah, they're thinking that because the, because of uh, seeing um, behind the scenes scenes of a uh, Deadpool, we're seeing uh, what is it, Hugh Jackman in the traditional wolverine yellow costume so you got that yep, and then you have yep. beast looking exactly like in the cartoon also so there's, they're saying that could it possibly be that they're trying to you know go into that universe x-men which <laughs> um which is coming out eventually soon on disney right. plus too because x-men 97 the uh animated that is supposed to be coming out as well and which is funny, too, because if you think about it within Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the one that gets his head snapped was supposed to be that one from 1997 as well, the animated version. Mm. Uh, because we got the little music cue from the cartoon when he came out. Oh, you're talking about when he was Xavier. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But they could easily change that out to a different actor at this point and say it's another alternate version, and that's the true well, alternate I mean, they version. They could still of, go to uh, um, what's his name, um, who played Xavier McAvoy. McAvoy. Yeah, I mean McAvoy yeah. would, did an excellent job as uh, Xavier. So I think I still think I I love both uh, Patrick Stewart and John McAvoy. Yeah. No, I think that uh, they, uh, James McAvoy. James McAvoy. Yeah. Um, I think he yeah. could still do the part. I mean, he's still young enough that he could still do it. I mean, oh, right yeah. now, Patrick is, you know, <laughs> in his 70s. Uh, I think he's past that. He's in his 80s. You I think? don't know. That's okay. a good question. Let me see. Yeah. Look up how old uh, Pat, Mr. Uh, Sir Patrick Stewart is because he's knighted. The Mr. Patrick Stewart was born in 1940. He's in his 80s. Damn. So, yep. <laughs> Mr. P uh, Captain Picard is really, really yeah, old. He's 83 as, uh, right now. Professor X. Damn. A year older than my mom. Okay. Yeah, he's a year older than my dad, actually. So, th <laughs> so that being said, yeah, I mean, and you know, and Patrick Stewart being such a phenomenal actor, I mean, actor. I still think he could yeah. possibly do the part, but I, I still think so. But too. that being said, I, th I think that, you know, James McAvoy can still do the a good part with that and hopefully they'll bring him back hopefully they'll bring back some of the x-men the fox x-men that were out there that we do enjoy like uh we've already mentioned it when we covered wandavision when who was it that played uh quicksilver originally in the fox i'm oh, forgetting his name. about uh what's his american horror story and uh kick-ass actor what's his name was it ash no ashton no um no 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 but i always look forward to those particular characters coming out or those versions we did get him back in wandavision correct which was great but I I look forward to having that because he played it so well. Evan Peters in the Fox. Uh, oh, okay. Evan Peters. Evan yeah. Peters. So I I look forward to seeing him come back and reprise his character. I thought he did very well with it. Nicholas Holt. I said I I always thought he was pretty okay as the Beast as well. I didn't think anything bad of him. Now, uh, when it comes to uh. So here's my fantasy, what I would call my fantasy X-Men team, right? So I would okay, have good. James McAvoy come back as Xavier. Okay. Um, I will keep Kelsey Grammer as Beast as long as they CG him exactly the way they did uh, in the end credits. And not yeah, right, the voice. Just, just use the voice, voice because the yeah. voice is perfect. 
I would yeah. do um, Holly Berry, Still a Storm. I will. Yeah, I would have gone at Angela Bassett. Nah, I still wanted. think Holly Berry would have been better. But that being said, that's just me. Then I okay. would have done somebody like um, uh, who's the guy who uh, Matt uh, Madsen or some of the guy who plays Cyclops. Oh, I know who you're talking about the original uh, the original 20th Century Fox Cyclops. Correct. Um, okay. I would have done him. He's a good actor. He was in Westworld. He did. He's grown as an actor overall. He was a child star originally. Yeah. And then I would have taken um, whoever played Colossus in Deadpool. Uh, whoever. I think they're keeping that particular character. Yeah. So like <laughs> the CG version of Colossus, and then I forgot who the uh, who the voice actor on that. I will keep that. Yeah. Nightcrawler, I'm not sure because Nightcrawler was originally done. Um, who's that actor that also did Nightcrawler at the b- very beginning? Oh, Nightcrawler in the uh oh in the it was the uh in X2. It was Yeah, I, I, I know you're talking about. I almost uh Alan Cumming. Yeah, Alan yeah. Cummings. So I'm so Alan Cumming. I'm not sure about his about him being, but then there's a kid that came out in as a as Nightcrawler and like the in what was it in the uh, in the last X Men that came out. Well, yeah, the first class series. Correct. As he you was would younger say, because it was in, he was a little yeah. younger. I I think that there's certain characters that would have to be CG. So I think Nightcrawler should have been CG'd, Colossus should be CG'd, and of course Beast definitely should be. Those three right there, in order to follow the same look as the comic book, they should be CG. Whoever you get as a voice actor, as long as they're a good voice actor, I could care less. Yeah. So, but yeah, th- I I would change out Rogue though. Uh, you don't you don't Honest. like um, Anna Paquin. I like Anna Paquin as an actress in a lot of films and movies and shows, but I don't think she doesn't portray she had she doesn't portray mark. the rogue from the comic books. The comic, right. I I think we could easily get somebody who's a little younger, short haired, not the long haired rogue. We get the little white stripe in our hair. I mean, I could care uh, less about younger. I mean, I, what what needs to happen is the southern accent because Rogue is supposed to be from the south, and correct. that w- didn't come through with the Anna Peck when uh, when she did it. So I think yeah. something like that. I also think like let's say somebody like um, who would I pick for uh, Jean Grey? I'm not even sure there. Um, I do like. Uh, Famke Jensen. Um, I th- yeah, Famke played it great. I think she did great on that, and I probably would keep her. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that I don't mind Sophie, uh, Sophie Turner, because she, I think she's very beautiful and everything. I yeah, and I don't. Th- I think that she could still do a great job. I just think that that was a horrible script that they did for Dark Phoenix. Oh yeah, yeah. That that we we covered that on your podcast, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that I, was a. Uh, Trademark. Yeah, and I think Michael Fassbender as Magneto is still perfect. Same here. I think he's still a great actor. Yeah, when it comes I to think that, that um, Josh Brolin as um, Cable. Cable, fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a few. The New Mutants, I didn't like the cast of the New Mutants at all. Yeah, you were very much clear about that, and I understand. <laughs> um, I was... Uh, uh, that movie in itself came way too late and it was in developmental hell. Yeah. And it, it did a story arc that I did enjoy when it came out, but it was a story arc that was like 30 years or almost 40 years at that point, because it was a new mutants line. I remember when the new mutants came out on the scene and, uh, 
It was a it was a great comic stand. book. I mean, I remember collecting the yeah. comic book. It has some great stories. I just think that they didn't portray it the right way, and that, I, that's why that. And they also try to make that movie into like a horror film. So I yeah yeah it was at a time when they were trying to push the edge in the envelope yeah. at that point, and it was Fox still as well. Uh, I I found the movie entertaining. I didn't find it exhilarating i didn't see it as a motivational tool for within the mcu itself right but as a standalone it was okay and entertaining uh different story arc and everything and it also represented a uh comic story that i did enjoy back then right. too but uh you know but like minusing and they do mention xavier in it but uh in this case it was like a, a, like in a sanitarium isolated right. with mutants you know being you know treated by a mutant herself and i and i but, would and i would continue uh, having rebecca remain stamos as a uh, as mystique and i would also oh, yeah. do um jennifer lawrence as mystique no too. <laughs> no 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 i honestly didn't like her as mystique at all oh yeah really? I, I didn't think she did that and of course hugh jackman as wolverine not you know danny devito like you want uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh i would rather daniel radcliffe at this point <laughs> but uh, if we had to find an alternate uh wolverine uh yeah hugh jackman is always a go-to regardless of him being six foot two <laughs> <laughs> but you know so there's a few characters out there that you know i think there's a few people that um did a great job when it came to those characters and if they're looking yeah. to bring some of those characters back or bring some, you know those actors back sure i'll welcome them because they did such a fantastic job but if they're going to change them mm -hmm. keep in mind what they are you know who played them before and yeah you as a studio you should be going okay i need to find somebody as good as these people mm -hmm. or better you know, yeah. so and now it's kind of like like if you look at the DC world that's out there, too, it's like, oh, hold on. We got to hold a, a candle to Christopher Reeve. We got to hold a candle to Brandon Routh. We got to hold a candle to uh, Dean Kane, who played Superman right. all these people, uh, you know, just as much as we do with Supergirl herself or like what they do within the flesh. It's like, hold on, what do, we're, we're going to pay homage to nick cage even though nick cage didn't want to be part of the movie <laughs> and he, in a movie that never even happened <laughs> yeah so you, oh he wanted he wanted to be part of the first time the, uh, the movie is just oh the first time they were working on it with tim burton yeah. yes but by the time he saw that he goes i didn't give them my likeness image rights <laughs> no <laughs> no that's not recently. true he did he just did he, oh, he just did? didn't know he was going to be fighting a spider because he oh, okay. <laughs> went he went in for one day of filming um in the actual costume the way they had it and everything it's just, yeah oh, really? he just didn't know he didn't know that he was going to be fighting a spider he goes he said that he's like <laughs> they didn't tell me i was going to fight a spider they just said okay we're just going to film you and stuff like that but i didn't know about the spider part <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he's complaining anyway. He's in a big movie. He didn't have, really have to do too much. <laughs> exactly. So he got his payday. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's my take on that. You know, so the Marvels to me is a, a movie that didn't live. I don't think lives up to what Marvel has done before. So it here. had, the, it had yeah. the charming parts of, you know, it had some charming, t you know, area. The typical Marvel charming right, moments but... of humor action uh definitely timing yeah. within it but uh character development a little bit different it's kind of it felt a little off kilter but it's a movie say, that nobody right? asked for yeah well we asked for it a, a number of years ago after captain marvel came out but not really it, did it we yeah i did i was looking forward to it within at least two or three years mm. And it's been so long because since in the that first 10 in the out. first 10 years, you had Iron Man and then people were like, well, if you have right. Iron Man, you got to have Thor. Well, we have Thor. Well, you got to have Captain America. We got Captain America. 
the Hulk. Yeah. We got Ant-Man. We got Hawkeye. We got things that people were asking for. We even got Captain Marvel because people were asking, hey, Captain Marvel. The right. Marvels, <laughs> you know, trying to team these three, these uh, three ladies together. To me, it's like, so what's new about that? You know, yeah. you're not introducing something that I haven't already seen because you already put Miss Marvel in her own show. You already had Monica Rambo in WandaVision. Mm. Uh, what, what, what are you? I mean, you had to bring in something huge for it to because the first movie did over a billion dollars you yeah. know so you have but then again sh- that first movie was writing it on the coattails of you know the uh the whole avengers um end game thing you know leading mm. up to that <clears throat> this is not leading up to anything <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> this is trying to carry the torch and it's not doing so well as doing so uh, I would say have yeah. people, you know, don't. This is just our review, and again, this is just our personal preference or what, what or our personal views on it. I would yeah. just challenge everybody out there: go see it and go see what we're talking. about. If you like it, great. Let us know. If you don't, let us know why. Yeah. You know, I, I we're always looking forward to hearing from the public out there uh, on what yeah. they think. What were your yeah, views about exactly? It. So. Well, with that, and hearing from you people out there, uh, well, where can listeners hear you? Me, well, you can listen to me here every day. I'll be here every day. <laughs> I'm going to be on a microphone. I'm going to record myself, and I'm just going <laughs> to ramble like an old man forever. No, you can actually hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. And we just finished actually doing uh, our Danny Elfman um, uh, podcast, our episode where we cover... Danny Elfman's life and you know and of course a lot of his soundtracks and we actually do some samples of that so you people could hear you know some of his work out there so hopefully that'll be that should be out hopefully uh by next week awesome so that's fantasy picks movie edition everybody and you can find that online in any uh podcast player of choice uh also you could hear Rob here we still have to finish up Gen V yep on season one so we're going to cover uh the last two episodes uh that'll be coming up probably in another week uh as well as uh sometimes on adrenaline cinema podcast which i also do so obviously you can hear me here on panels to pixels podcast as always uh adrenaline cinema podcast as well where uh the only thing that we have out currently right now is total recall which is the arnold schwarzenegger movie uh from the the 90s oh good not so, the uh, uh not the not the uh, not the remake <laughs> not oh, the remake God. obviously <laughs> so actually but, that uh, that is remake funny. is on my list of movies that we're gonna cover one day <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, i have to actually watch that again <laughs> uh, it's painful oh don't worry it's not even gonna be i don't even think it's uh, slated for uh, next year but it is on the list i have a huge list of all these failed movies and yeah, uh, that we could actually try to fix and remake yeah, on and, Fantasy Picks movie and then, edition. <laughs> and that one's on the list, but it's not going to probably get covered anytime soon. <laughs> Unless people want to hear it. I don't know. Uh, you never know. That's what feedback is for. everybody. Right. Uh, you can also hear me on um, on the podcast forward slash uh, Wilhelm collaboration, which is uh, Monarch legacy of beast we're going to be covering that on uh that cross platform the, the first episode podcast. just got released as of today yeah the first two actually the first two were dropped on is apple it TV the first Plus. two because i just saw like on apple tv that it you know it says watch now so i saw i went through it and i i took a look and it has the first two. Oh episodes. wow that's great so uh this weekend uh ben kind of delayed it as far as recording but we will definitely be recording uh, we're doing this Friday, November 17th. So we'll be recording on um, Sunday, the 19th. So keep that in mind if you want to send a feedback. Most likely, you by the time you get this episode, it's going to be Saturday, the 18th. But uh, yeah, I'm covering that with uh, my friend Ben Beck, who does the Wilhelm podcast, uh, uh, the revisited podcast as well for... Uh, Wilhelm and 
Podcastka, uh, which is currently still going through their Ted Lasso. So if you love Ted Lasso, go check out oh the Revisited my God. Podcast. What a great show. So It's an awesome show. So uh, I'm probably going to be sending in feedback for the most recent episode, which uh, oh, I forget the name of the episode, but it's after uh, Make Rebecca Great Again. Uh, it's the on in the first season. But I'm going to send in some feedback, hopefully, because there's something that they kind of left out mm. about regarding Van Halen, of all things. <laughs> Where? In uh, Ted Lasso? Yeah, they kind of left it out in uh, when Ben and Kristen were talking about it. They were like, they made the comment about um, who's the second best uh, singer mm. after the David Lee Roth years. And they said um, Sammy Hagar. But Ben didn't realize he kind of mentioned something about how, well, Sammy Hagar was the only other person after Roth. And, and that's actually untrue. Gary Cherone from Extreme was the next singer after Sammy Hagar, after Roth. Oh, okay. For a while. And uh, people forgot about that because it, literally they did one album. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but Hagar is definitely the best. But I think that's where they kind of got stuck with the, uh, it's like, oh, I made a mistake kind of thing. And and kind of commenting about that. I thought it was a, a good coverage, though. I, I thought that, you know, him and Kristen are doing great. And, oh, my God, it, it's one to check out as far as a podcast but also a tv show um so you can hear me on monarch legacy of beast through uh wilhelm and podcastka it's going to be distributed on both uh podcasts so you can hear me there i put up cross promotion as well on adrenaline as well as pants pixels so that way you guys you listeners could easily find me there and then send in some feedback if you're into uh legendary's version of uh, a monster verse so uh, you can hear me there. Um, and as always, right here, like I said, in Panels of Pixels podcast, because we'll be coming back because we got a lot more stuff that's coming out. We got teased with Madam Web on, from Sony. So we might be covering that as well as Craven, obviously. But Craven's been in the works and been advertised. That has gotten also, so much what bad a- press. press. That Madam <laughs> Web. I oh, know. my God. I know. So we'll probably be discussing that, but also what if that's going to be on Disney plus too. So we finally get that, uh, the next season that we've been wanting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, there was talks about Sandman actually coming back on Netflix. So we look forward to that in the coming year. So I'm looking forward to uh, covering that uh, as well on podcast, a network for the Sandman cast with my friend, Jamie Dimmick. Cool. Uh, and as well as you could hear me here, like I said, on Panels of Pixels podcast, as we continue our coverage with Invincible Season 2. So you can hear me and Jamie cover that. So look forward to hearing that. Uh, for feedback, kind of like how Rob had mentioned, well, there's easy ways to actually uh, follow us. You can go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash Panels of Pixels. Uh, I usually put an image just like on Instagram where we could be found at panels to pixels podcast. So all you have to do is subscribe or follow or uh, all that good jazz on those two platforms. Uh, I post the same thing there. So basically it's going to be an image and it states what we're going to be covering that week. And all you have to do is put it in the comments below and we'll read them. So all you have to do is that, or you could just email us flat out with panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels two is spe- spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com type out your thoughts. We'll read them or you could easily just record yourself and send it as an attachment. And then we could easily play it on the podcast and your voice could be heard as well as ours on the podcast. And we will actually comment on it and have a little discussion about your thoughts, whether we agree, disagree, or laugh, because we like to have a good chuckle, because whenever I send it feedback, people laugh at it, (laughs) (laughs) which is funny. Uh, We could be heard on, uh, not only be heard on, but found on YouTube. So all you have to do is go to 
uh, YouTube and search for Panels to Pixels podcast. While you're there, subscribe, uh, ring the bell to be alerted when anything else uh, comes up that's new. And give a thumbs up if you like what's going on. Uh, the more we get uh, seen and heard, the more subscribers, viewers, the more we get noticed. And it's amazing. And let's talk about uh, reviews as well. So uh, we can be found on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. Preferably, if you could give us a uh, five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, it would be really appreciated uh but i always ask my audiences to just be you know honest and truthful uh give us a rating or review type one out that's always the best way because that comes and rings right through because that's a lot of how people uh gauge on whether to whether or not to you know listen to a podcast or not but uh yeah those are the ways to engage us and uh give us your thoughts so if you can do that be greatly appreciate it so well that's it for this episode i just want to thank everyone for listening i'm mark and i'm rob and different panel different pixels same podcast this was panels the pixels podcast and we'll see you on the next panel good day good night everyone goodbye (laughs) 